Well, Shabbat Shalom. For the past several weeks, leading up to literally today, all of your rabbis here have been sermonizing on Passover. We want to get everybody thinking about, getting everybody excited about Passover. And today is Shabbat Hagadol, the big Shabbat. The Shabbat before Passover starts. So this is it. I have got to get you really excited. I have to share some kind of Passover insight that is so beautiful and so awe-inspiring. Something about Passover that, that I love, and so then you love it, and then you're excited. The problem is, right now, the only thing I can think about, the only thing I can think about is something about Passover that I absolutely hate. I, I, I just, I dread it, and it drives me nuts. Pretty much every Jew knows, and a lot of non-Jews know too, that on Passover we don't eat bread, right? We, we say bread, we mean chametz. On Passover we don't eat chametz. When does Passover start? Tonight. We don't eat bread or chametz. Ah, but what can we eat? Matzah. Great. Okay, none of this is groundbreaking. I shouldn't be saying things that you're like, what? No. But here is something that at least I personally did not know until I went to rabbinical school. Tonight, when Pesach starts and we can start eating matzah, hooray, wonderful. But tradition, traditionally speaking, by when must you stop eating chametz? Traditionally speaking, just, you know, classically speaking. It's not that you stop eating chametz tonight. No, actually, technically, you stop eating chametz two hours before midday. Do you know what time that is in Houston, Texas in 2021? It's 11.23 a.m. So, enjoy those muffins for your breakfast while you can. When I left my home to come here this morning, I could eat whatever chametz I wanted. And if I get home after like 11.30, no more chametz for me, but also no matzah. And this infuriates me. Not because I really want to eat matzah. I don't love matzah. No one loves matzah, first of all. Someone's going to put in the comments, I love matzah. Oh, sorry. And it's not even because there's nothing to eat, really. It's not that there is no good grain-free, matzah-free foods out there. This was true several years ago when you were in this kind of no-Jews land of no chametz but no matzah. And you were hungry. What are you going to eat? A piece of fruit? I don't know. Ugh. These days, however, there are lots and lots of amazing foods that you can buy or you can make with almond flour, or coconut flour, or cassava flour. There's so many options. You're not going to be hungry. It's not that I'm annoyed that I'm hungry for a couple hours, half a day. It's this time, this in-between time. Not Passover yet, so you can't eat matzah, but it's really close to Passover, so you can't eat chametz. And you're just going to bounce around in there, in this not here, not there time. For hours, being in this time really, really frustrates me. It grates at me. It seriously, it puts me in a bad mood. I'm not kidding. For dramatic effect, it's true. But finally... Finally, this year, after all these years of keeping this rule, I have figured out why the no chametz, no matzah thing drives me up a wall. And I actually think it's because of this year being the year that it has been. Because this whole past year has felt, felt like one giant in-between time to me. It feels like we're always talking about and thinking about and remembering what life was like before, what Passover was before, what Hanukkah and High Holidays were before, what our birthday and our anniversary were before, and our going to work and school was like before, and what vacation was before, and hanging out with our friends was like before. And at the same time, we're always thinking about the after, after this is over, how we'll celebrate holidays. After this is over, what will we do to mark special occasions? After this is over, what will work be like? What will school be like? After this is over, how will we spend time with the people we love? 
One of the things that I have found most infuriating about the past year is the in-betweenness of it all. I remember saying to my husband, to Ariel, at the very beginning of all of this, a year ago, it feels like we're waiting for something to happen. Something. And that feeling never went away. Never completely went away. And it's unsettling. It's hard to feel settled when you are neither here nor there. It's hard to feel rooted when it feels like the ground below you is always moving, and it's hard to feel secure when you're not firmly planted. A very wise rabbi once taught me two overarching rules about giving sermons. Every rabbi has their Torah. They've got that one message that weaves its way into whatever it is they speak about. They don't think they're even going to talk about it when they start writing, but eventually... There it is, because it's their truth, and it always comes through. And every rabbi gives the sermon that they themselves need to hear. And because he is a very wise rabbi, he was, of course, correct. Because I feel like every sermon I give comes down to one of only a few main focal points, and one of them is this. That Jewish traditions and customs and rules are not just an exercise to see if we can be convinced to wear ridiculous clothes, like what is this? Or if we can be convinced to learn some mildly obscure language. Or if we can be convinced to not eat very delicious foods. The rules and customs we have exist to teach us bigger, broader lessons about life. They serve to refine the human spirit. And in this case, that this limiting liminal time in which we are neither here nor there, Passover-wise, which can feel so terribly discomforting, Judaism is teaching us that that kind of discomfort is something we have to learn to live with. And though it may feel strange, it is a feeling we can learn to familiarize ourselves with and that we should familiarize ourselves with it because it comes up in life. Not Passover-wise, for example, pandemic-wise. And we clearly can learn to live with it because we can do it. We've done it. We're doing it now. And has it been easy? No. It's been very, very trying this past year. We don't have to like it. I haven't liked a lot of it. We just got to get through it. Because eventually, Judaism teaches. Eventually, night falls and Passover begins. And the in-between time is over. Eventually, gradually, gradually, and only with the full effort of all of us, we will move out of this in between time, uh, this pandemic, we will. It's going to happen. It's it's actually starting to happen now, thank God. Jewish tradition, with these few hours we're entering into very soon, just a few hours of time we might have to white-knuckle to get through it. But they remind us that life may feel interminable, We might feel, when will this end? I can't take it anymore. I can't do this anymore. When in fact, we can. We have that strength. And wouldn't you know it, that is exactly the sermon I needed to hear. As we enter into the final countdown of hours before Passover begins, and with its Zman Cherutein, as we traditionally call it, the season of our freedom, I hope that you know that that season is in the process of starting in more ways than one. And that our freedom from Egypt did not come all at once, but gradually with much trudging through the desert and not a small amount of complaining. But we made it then, and we can make it again. We don't have to enjoy every step along the way, we just have to know that we have the strength to do whatever it takes so that soon we may all be safe and happy and free. 
Shabbat Shalom and an early happy Passover.